My simulator rig here owes me more than $35,000 Australian. But before you run for cover, hang up and go, oh, this is all too hard. It doesn't actually have to be that bad. And when you break it down, it actually isn't. Hang around and I'll talk you through it. Well, good day, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you are well. Yes, it is over $35,000 Australian, but there is so much to that. There is so much stuff that I have used and I don't use anymore, stuff that I have sold along the way, bought along the way. So let's break it down into the major components, add all that up, and see how we go, shall we? Let's start with the TVs. These are Samsung 4K monitors, QC55 is the model, and at the time I got them on a Black Friday sale. They were $1,500 each. So, add that up, $4,500 just in the monitors. The TV stands, as you can see, supporting the TVs, one for the left monitor, one for the right. Uh, the one on the front's not required because the frame itself uh, actually provides support for the, uh, for the front screen. Those uh, freestanding uh, TV stands, to be able to support the 55-inch screens, uh, I paid, uh, at the time, I paid $250 Australian each. So there are two of them, $500. The framing that you're looking at uh, on the still image here as well is fairly straightforward timber. Um, in metric, 70 millimetres by 35 millimetres is generally the timber size. It's a treated pine, and then I've painted it black. Again, uh, I, des I designed all of this myself in Fusion 360. There's plenty of videos uh, through the history showing you guys what I've done there. Um, but I would estimate, without breaking it down, I've probably spent two to $300 in timber material uh, to be able to make up the frame itself. On top of that, there was a whole bunch of brackets um, and fixing brackets and so on, so you could probably add another couple of hundred dollars for that. So let's just say for the framing itself, probably around $500 Australian to get the frame uh, similar to what you're looking at there. So if we move now into the panel itself, uh, so obviously I've got a custom designed panel here. The actual panel itself, uh, the gray panel that you can see is six millimeter MDF. Uh, again, designed in Fusion 360 and cut with the CNC. To cut that with the CNC, uh, I think from memory, I paid about $150 to take that file and get it cut for me. So it wasn't ultra expensive. You can do that part yourself if you're pretty good with a jigsaw. So, you know, an MDF panel is really not that expensive and you don't necessarily have to have an F MDF panel if you don't want to. I just chose to have it because I love the look of the layout. The PFD, audio panel and MFD, I've elected to go with Simeonic and I've had that since day one. They're fantastic units. I've got the older version of these and they run with a 9.7 inch uh, iPad Air 2. Latest iterations of these now run with 10.2 inch iPads or even up to 11 inch, I believe. Simeonic also uh, do this with a inbuilt LCD screen as well as a, as a recent iteration of this. So for these units themselves, if you're to buy them as a, as a complete set like this, uh, and depending on the configuration, you can pay anywhere between $1,564 US dollars up to $1,864 US dollars. So if we call it $1,600 up to $1,900 US dollars. So work that out in your own conversions. So they are relatively expensive um, for what you're getting um, and obviously is a fairly significant part of the overall setup. You can't see it because it's hidden behind the yoke here a little bit, but this is a Simeonic switch panel complementing the G1000 suite. I love this switch panel. Um, originally when I was building and designing my system, 
Uh, I did one of these myself um, and, you know, I did all the rocker switches and, and uh, toggle switches and everything and wired it back to an Arduino board. Um, but ultimately, I just couldn't get the level of quality that these guys have done. This system here, this unit here, retails as of June 2024 for 210 US dollars. So that's your switch panel and it's pretty easy. It's a USB plug, plug straight into the back of your PC. So very, very handy. A semionic switch panel is what I've got there. Moving through the panel, as you can see, I've got standby gauges here. Now, obviously, uh, before you shout out, a typical uh, 172 only has three. Um, my 172 simulator is just a fraction wider uh, than what is standard. Uh, and because of that, I was able to actually fit in an additional gauge uh, during my initial design. So I've decided to do that. I have four of these standby gauges that are also by Simeonic. Originally, I had 3D printed gauges that I used and shout out to Captain Bob, who will take you through how to do all of your standby gauges uh, if you wanna go down that path and it's considerably cheaper. Uh, these now have been a recent upgrade of mine. Uh, they're backlit LCD screens and you can buy them uh, either individually, as I have done here, and they retail for about 130 US dollars each from Simeonic, or you can buy them as a set, a six pack set as well. If you buy them as a set six pack, uh, I believe it's about 840 uh, US dollars uh, there for the six pack, or you can also buy a standard three way configuration in standby as well. And if you buy that just on its own, uh, you can do that for 425 uh, US dollars. But for me, I bought them individually, $130 each, and I bought four of them. So 130 times four, and they are my standby gauges. I use an iPad mini here. I've had this uh, for a while. It's literally uh, stuck onto the yoke with uh, velcro it's very very easy onto the yoke pretty easy to do uh, you know it's fantastic tool it just mounts there beautifully uh, and i've had it uh, for a number of years now so again i think you all know the cost of ipad minis whether you buy them brand new or whether you buy them uh, refurbished um, i can't remember now what i paid for this but you know a few hundred dollars i think i've got a refurbished one at the time so iPad mini, um, fantastic. So that's, that's that there. If we talk about yokes, uh, I'd actually don't have a, a Brunner yoke or a CSL 60 from Flight Sim or a, or a Logitech yoke or any of that. And so this is actually 3D printed and it's in four parts. There's a separate video on that. Feel free to go and check out the build series. In terms of uh, the cost of this for me, um, from memory, I, I paid about 60 or 70 Australian dollars. Uh, again, that video will clarify that cost of the, of the material, relatively cheap, probably about $10 more in terms of time uh, to get it all together and then pre-wire um, you know, my uh, push to torque and my electric trim and so on, and then wire that out the back. So I think if I was to sum uh, my dual yoke setup uh, in terms of the primary and the co-pilot's yoke and the uh, aluminium shafts that are going back, and then you can see the linkage uh, system that I have behind the panel here, you probably could get away with I'd say about $500 for the entire setup, but again, there's a lot of time involved uh, in doing that. So again, if you took that out of the equation, there's your yokes, roughly about $500 for the complete setup. In a similar fashion, uh, I also don't have a uh, off-the-shelf uh, throttle and mixture here. This has uh, also uh, been custom designed and built by myself. Got some 3D printed uh, knobs here. It's got a linear travel of about 100 millimeters, and behind that are two 100 millimeter linear potentiometers. That bit there, um, probably the main cost is in your linear potentiometers. Those linear potentiometers from memory were about $50 Australian each. There are two of them. 
so that's a hundred material itself probably about twenty dollars if that it's more about the time uh, to go into doing all the 3d design and 3d printing and so on so um, you know that set up there for me in terms of pure cost I would estimate at about hundred and fifty dollars and I've got a throttle and mixture You probably can't see it the best because it's tucked in behind the co-pilot yoke here, but that's a flaps panel. That flaps panel itself, I actually bought the original one from Desktop Aviator. Uh, and as of June 2024, you can buy those from Desktop Aviator from about for about $75, $76 US, I believe. It doesn't have a separate indicator on it. It's purely flaps. And what I did uh, on this one as well is I actually changed the fascia plate uh, on, on mine. I've just preferred my fascia plate. At the time, I was looking at doing some backlighting, but it didn't actually work. <laughs> so I might actually put the original fascia plate back on from Desktop Aviator. So that's the wing flaps there. Relatively cheap say 75 76 us dollars uh, for that plus shipping i would believe depending on where you live again something that disappears out of view here but you i do actually have a uh, handbrake that wasn't a purchased item this was all done through 3d printing so the parts are relatively cheap um, it's literally just a, uh, a literally a limit switch. It's pretty cheap. The limit switch, I think, was about $4. Uh, and then you've obviously just got to design the brake mechanism itself and the spring and so on. So I would estimate in terms of pure parts uh, for that, uh, but Australian dollars, that's probably about 20 for the parking brake again. Um, but that was designed from first principles. Uh, but it works a treat. Unfortunately, the trim wheel and the fuel selector is off camera. It's down low. You can't see that at the moment. But what I can say is that they're relatively cheap. I didn't buy these off the shelf. I actually 3D printed these from scratch um, and, and put them together, you know, with rotary encoders and a 90 degree switch as the case for a, uh, the fuel selector. So, but if I was to estimate the costs of both the trim wheel um, probably that's, I'd say, about $50 uh, Australian for me. But again, uh, only had a rotary encoder in there, a little, some small wires, and the rest of it's all very, very cheap 3D printed um, material. And similarly with the fuel selector, the most expensive part was the 90 degree switch. Uh, the rest of it's all relatively cheap uh, 3D printed plastic. So that's probably another $50 to $60 Australian for the fuel selector as well. The rudder pedals that I use are Turtle Beach Velocity 1. I've had them for about a year or so now and they're fantastic. Prior to that I had my Logitech uh, rudder pedals and they were also good at the time but I wanted something a bit more stable The and these are certainly a lot more rigid. They've got the Cessna style uh, pedal as well uh, with the toe brakes and all of it. So really, really happy with those. As of June 2024, uh, they're retailing at about 450 Australian dollars. Uh, and again, uh, I would thoroughly recommend them. They're a, gr they're a great uh, piece of equipment to complement your flight sim. Underneath the floor of this simulator, I've got a butt kicker system. It's a butt kicker gamer plus that gives me that uh, vibration through the floor, which ultimately transfers itself up through the seat as well. And it adds to another layer of immersion. It's about $500 Australian. Um, there's a little bit of configuration to it, but it's relatively straightforward. If you're going to build yourself a sim rig, I'd thoroughly recommend that you look at getting yourself a bug picker or haptic feedback of some description. Really, really useful and great to have. Now with any flight simulator setup, those of you that know, if you particularly if you've got triple screens, you're going to need a pretty meaty uh, PC to be able to run it. But once you start getting into triples, you've really got to be considering a high-end PC. Uh, I'm still running a 14900K CPU, which isn't too shabby, 
but my graphics card is quite outdated at a 3090 Ti, probably in the order of about $6,000 Australian or thereabouts. Um, I think at the time I probably paid $7,000, uh, but you can allow for some depreciation that would happen in the graphics card, uh, CPU and so on. If you want to be able to have triple screen set up with everything turned on and running ultra settings and getting at least 30 frames a second, if not more, then you're going to have to spend heavily uh, on, a, on a PC. And for this particular setup, triple screens uh, running good settings and good frame rates uh, and good graphical quality uh, at 4K resolution, I might add, times three, um, needs something pretty meaty. So your PC is going to be expensive. Keeping it relatively simple, there's obviously a whole bunch of cables uh, that come out of here, HDMI cables, making sure that they're 2.1, making sure that your audio cables and any of your cabling, uh, your network cabling is CAT6. Uh, again, I, I haven't got the exact figure here, but um, you could estimate there's a good probably a couple of hundred dollars uh, in cabling. Um, in in terms of the HDMI cabling and the USB cables and so on and so forth that I've got. So a couple of hundred dollars there as well uh, in terms of cabling. The headphones that I choose to wear, and I have had these for a while and I really, really enjoy them, is a Logitech G Pro. Retail for about $300 Australian, uh, but are a very, very good uh, headset in my view. You can't see it, but what I'm sitting on here is a very crude and rudimentary office chair. It's pretty good after a couple of hours, but after that it starts to get a little bit uh, uncomfortable. But for those duration of flights, it's pretty good. One of the reasons um, I did the chair like this uh, was because of ease of removing it. Um, I find that if I'm tinkering inside of the sim and I need to get to something, be it the center console or, or want to do some work on the simulator and, and pull things out, um, I like the flexibility of being able to just grab the office chair and literally just take it straight out and then put it back in again. Very cheap office chair, black one, plenty of them around. The other part is the software. Now in terms of software, other than your Windows operating system, you're going to need to have a simulator of sorts. X-Plane 12, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have both of them installed. X-Plane 12 has cost me at the time on a digital download, $60. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator for me was uh, my deluxe version, I believe I paid about $100 Australian for. Uh, so there's a couple of hundred dollars in terms of software. Once you get that software, as anyone knows, then you can start buying other add-ons and bits and pieces and the list goes on from there. So what I've given you here is your base hardware and software that will enable you to have a, I guess, a similar setup to what I've got here. And as you can see, it's going to cost you a lot less than $35,000 Australian. Once you get into it, though, the hobby will never end. You will find yourself spending more. You will find yourself upgrading. And I think if you look back at it year on year, eventually you'll do a bit like what I've done. Look back at it and go, holy cow. Look how much money I've spent on this hobby over the years. Well, I hope you guys got some benefit out of that and it added some value in your thoughts and thinking around what the real costs are of a simulator and building it for yourselves. Look forward to catching up with you on the next one. Bye for now. Let's start with the TV screens that you're looking at. These are Samsung QC... Blah, blah, blah.